Hello! <laughs> hey, Twitch! <laughs> uh, happy Tuesday, and we've just been sitting here waiting to start, but um, Mabel is pumped for her treat, and she is... <laughs> she's literally twitching. She's literally twitching right now for this thing. Tell him! Tell him! <laughs> you want to say what, anything else? You be good girl? <laughs> Do you want a treat? Did I say, oh, no, no, no. Did I say the word? You want it? You want the treat? You want to show them your belly? Flo, flo, I can't. We don't have a, we don't, we don't know how to roll. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So just like always, we, <laughs> well, not always. This is the last week's uh, head of cabbage. It's a little bigger than usual. So we'll see if she eats the whole thing, but, um, Filled with peanut butter and all the dog treats, all the salmon, all of the sweet potato. I wouldn't eat it. I'm not her. Come on, take it. You can have it. You can have it. Come on, go, go, go. Get it. Take it. Yeah, take it. Sorry, I didn't mean to accidentally like take it from you. Oh, it's too heavy, eh? Big? Okay. <laughs> there you go. You're a good girl. Good girl. Wow, she's become such a different dog through this process. Um, I think I mentioned it last week, but gosh. <laughs> she used to bark at the computer so much, so it's so nice to have her chilled out. <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, Brett, are you in the chat? Are we, are we here? <laughs> this week on... Rig along the Twitch stream. We are continuing with uh, the project that we've been working on. We've got Skelly, which is Brett's design. Hey, Brett. Uh, nice to see you. Really happy to, that you've made it. Um, I know that we've been talking about this behind the chats, or I guess through LinkedIn chats. Uh, but today we're going to be talking a little bit about mouth comps before I get into the rigging of the skull. And then we're going to go over that. Do you have any questions from last week, Brett? I know that um, I can kind of go over the display. I wanted to go over the display with you a little bit today um, as well. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will, uh, I'll go over them while we're here um, talking on the camera today. Sorry, I felt like a robot. Um, but what else? And then the other thing, uh, if anyone's watching this this week, please join me uh, live on the Animations Trends Events uh, channel. Um, I believe it's going to be Thursday the 30th at 3 p.m. Um, I will be rigging an arm. So here we're rigging a skull. We've got a face. We've got all of the mechanics, probably a couple more mechanics than usual with the teeth and the whole jaw comp. Um, but yeah, we'll be rigging an arm on, on Tuesday and I've promised it's a very flexible, very strong arm. You're going to be able to do, I'm not on camera at all. <laughs> You're going to be able to do this with it, do this with it, go like this. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, all the very, all the very cool, uh, things that arms and legs can do. I promise that, uh, you'll be able to rig an arm within an hour. So at least that's what I'm hoping. So I'm testing out a new uh, series for tutorials and how to do this. I used to build them for studios. So when studios would contact Toon Boom, they would ask, how do you do this? And I would basically send back a scene with a few examples showing them what they could do and how to make things uh, and tailor things so that it looked exactly like the style that they wanted. Um, and then they could play with it and find some innovative ways to like make what they were looking for happen. So to basically bring their vision to life. Uh, so I call these playgrounds because you kind of go in and you kind of play around. Um, and I've never really released one out to the public. So this will be the first. So I'm kind of excited about it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's it. Uh, after that, actually, I'm going to also be having my weekly rigging drop in course. So for an hour and a half, I'll be available. You have to sign up through my website, uh, which is lindsaynoller.ca. And it is the help 
a drop-in clinic, a rigging drop-in clinic. So if anybody's out there working on their own rigs and watching these tutorials, uh, feel free to drop into that. It's going to be right after the Toon Booms 8 event. Uh, it's so yummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or I guess I should say that like a like a robot so yummy um, but yeah so looking forward to it uh, Brett any questions uh, before we get started I'll, I'll talk about the display to give you a little bit of chance um, to get your questions out there but uh, to go over the display um, Brett I challenged him because this is synthesis design he provided me with two skulls and since he's learning how to rig, and if you're following along somewhere out there in the world, on the internet, um, the reason why there's two skulls on this design is because I'm rigging one, and then you can kind of take what we're doing and apply it to the other one and rig the other skull. Now, at the very end of this, I am going to take the skull that I'm, I'm creating, and I'm going to try to morph it into the design, which is a bit ambitious, but I'm going to try and try and do that to the other skull um so we're gonna get some animated like real i love eyebrows i love animating eyebrows and animation so um that's kind of the one thing that i really really love about the skull besides the teeth how much fun we're gonna have rigging that but the i think the eyebrows are super expressive in this character so <laughs> that's what i want to do when we when i get through with this i'm going to animate it into the second pose but if you are practicing how to rig and you are trying to apply the principles, having two skulls built the same way but they're different uh, designs is a great way to kind of dip your toes in. So Brett's at home building the two skulls separately, so he's going to have the two um, when he's finished. And then what happened, the challenge that we ran into was... Uh, when he went to go create the second skull, he created a second display. So what that looks like, um, let me create a second network. So I'm just gonna quickly, it's, I know it's not quite like this, but let me create two networks. So it's really easy to think that you've got two, let's put this one over here. Um, you've got two designs in one in one scene. Uh, it's very efficient because you can jump back and forth between the two the two skulls, between the two designs. Um, we don't typically build, like it, professionally, we don't typically build two things in one scene. We usually have a separate scene for the, the rig. Um, but uh, when you're just rigging at home and you're practicing, you don't have to follow these rules. <laughs> you can kind of do whatever you want. So uh, it actually makes a lot of sense to jump because you're only care. Like to be honest, professionally, when I have to open scenes up, I it's not that I get annoyed, but you know, it, it it wastes a lot of time jumping between scenes. If you can have more than one scene open at once, that's really nice. But sometimes you have to close them, open them, and then jump back and then go back and like that. You waste a lot of time doing that. So having the two skulls in the one scene is is fine uh, but if you set it up like this what might happen and let me see how can I do, 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 do. I've got the two skulls in here right now but what I don't have is oops, you can't actually see the two skulls so let me turn on these two buttons. Can I move these over? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. This is a great example. Here we are. So I've just created the same problem <laughs> for myself. It took a minute to realize. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to do right now is create the two skulls. I'm trying to move all the pieces over so that, and Brett, I'm going to get to your question after. Uh, I finished this part, but what I'm trying to do right now is I've put a peg on everything. I just selected all, uh, control alt P and that gave me a peg for everything. And then I wanted to put a peg on just one peg so I can move the whole skull. 
basically so that I could see two skulls in my scene. It's not that, that it's the skull that we're, that you're trying to build, the one that I'm not building, um, but I wanted to pull to the side to see it, but I'm suffering from the same problem. I can't see it uh, physically in my camera view. I don't, I'm not even sharing my screen, so hang on. Gameplay, there we go. <laughs> let me switch over. All right, so let me do this one more time. So here in my network view, um, this is the network that I was mentioning. So here's my original network. And all I did was, I'll do it again, delete. Um, all I did was copy and paste, control V, control B. Did I do it? Oh, yep, yeah, just took a little longer. Uh, like this. And the goal was to just slide a version of the skull over so that I could see it. So I jumped into this network and I just, because I don't have pegs on anything, I can't, and because when we're rigging, we're building everything in place. This is what we want. Um, but for this purpose, I kind of need to move it over so you can see the two skulls. So really quickly, all I wanted to do was I just selected all of the drawings in my node view and I'm going to create pegs. I don't need to create all the pegs, but I'm, I'm just kind of following the steps that I did. Uh, and then I'm going to create one peg that rules them. And this is the problem that I'm having. I have created this massive extra network, but I can't actually select it. Um, and you can see here that it's, it's kind of frustrating. I totally get it. Uh, I didn't even notice that I walked myself right into the trap. Um, but here's the transform tool right here. Uh, and so you can see that it's selected, but I, can't, I don't have my transform tools. So the problem that I'm having right now is when I created, when I created the second network, um, what I didn't, what I didn't do or what I, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm creating a second display. And so within harmony, the displays are, are kind of an important part. Um, and you can use them to your advantage, but since we're just building a small, a small skull, we don't technically need two displays. Um, we add a display to the head so that we can isolate the head in animation. We add a display to our character. We always do. Um, and that allows you to isolate your character for animation if your scene has a whole bunch of characters in it. So it's just really nice that you can go in and turn them on. Uh, turn them on and off. So you can see here that everything is just a copy. I have my original display over here. Make this a little bit smaller. Uh, and then I have my display here. And if I go, there's this little drop box right here. Oh, that's not that one. Where's my, I don't have it open. Uh, so let me open it up. I should have my display. There we go. So it looks very similar and I think I can move it. I don't really actually want it to be there, which is there. There we go. So it looks, <laughs> looks pretty similar to the one that I was thinking it was, but here it actually says display and you can actually flip between your displays. And this is, this is where you, this is where you got trapped, uh, Brett is you've got the display all, which will allow you to display everything. So no matter what display you're using, um, sometimes that gets a little tricky though. So it's good to know that it's there, um, but there's also the display one and then there's the display two, well, the display underscore one, which would be this one. So now we're technically looking at everything here. Um, but because I have the two displays, you can only see the one. So now I've got, looks like my eyes didn't get connected. This is so creepy. Um, <laughs> but now I've got the display one and I could move my pieces over. Uh, but then this skeleton, this skelly is only in display. So you can see now that I am flipping between the two. And if I go to display all that I can see both. And so if you don't, no, <laughs> the displays, it's very easy to, to walk yourself into that trap. And I literally did it. So um, that's something that you always want to be aware of when you're working from the top view of your node view. Um, you only really need this display node and this right node. 
Um, the right node helps you render as a, in the rigging department, we don't really use the right node too much. Sometimes we have to test like high resolution textures or we want to look for um, higher resolution anti-aliasing, which is our arch nemesis in this department. Um, and so the original one is usually fine. So when you call it, when you find yourself in this trap, what you can do is you can just delete the right node and the extra display. Um, and since this is set to display all, uh, this is why it gets a little tricky. When you have it set to display all, you notice that my composite is not plugged into, or this composite for the new skull is not plugged into the original composite. So the extra artwork is being seen um, without it being connected. So it gets a little tricky. Um, so I would, if you're newer to the software, I would avoid using display all. I would actually try to follow along and try to try to stay within the rules. Um, well, you wouldn't know the rules, <laughs> uh, but now you do. <laughs> So it gets a little bit tricky, but that way when you are not working on something and you want to unplug it, it disappears um, and it's not in your way. So it gets a little, it can get a little frustrating on either, either way. Um, so this is definitely something that you want to try to keep in mind when you are building stuff. Um, the displays are great though, if you have more than one thing in your scene and you want to flip between the two, it's just something that you kind of got to keep in mind. Um, if I was rigging to of these skulls, what I would probably do is I would delete, I would not keep the both of the reference material. I don't think you need to have that. Um, it's best to just have a skeleton one and then a skeleton two. Uh, have them clearly labeled within your groups. And then if you are rigging one, then keep it plugged in and work within that that group uh, and then if you're working on the other you can unplug and then that way you can kind of switch between the two so just like something like that that's what I would do instead of just deactivating it because if you're deactivating um, it can still stay in your network and so or not your network your timeline and so sometimes when you have more than one thing in your timeline and you're just learning it, it can be a little overwhelming so it's best to just flip between the two something like this like that yeah uh, and that's displays, but I'm going to delete this because I don't, we don't want that. Um, okay, now your question. A question on how exactly we'll copy the eyes, pupils, and teeth. Well, those will be very two different, those will be two very different things. Um, your eyes, we're going to rig one eye and then we're going to use a tool called uh, static transformation. And static transformations are fantastic tools. They are one of my favorites. Um, and what they do is they allow you to duplicate information that is being reused. So with the eyes, we build one eye, we use a static transformation to bring it over to create the second eye, and then it's kind of done. Um, for the teeth, I'm assuming you mean because there's a lot of drawings, like a lot of teeth drawings, and so... Uh, there really isn't a, sh a fast way to do that. I think the fastest way is just take, it's, there's a, I think we counted last time, there's like 15 teeth. Um, there's definitely over 10 teeth. So I would just take a 10 drawings or however many teeth there are and I would copy and paste a square. Um, I would just, I would just kind of preform one tooth drawing um, and then copy it over 10 times and uh, that's probably the fastest way. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit today, especially the rigging. Um, we're definitely going to be getting into the eyes, and we will also be. I don't. Well, the, I'm like leaving the teeth for last because I always I just always put the mouth off for whatever reason. Um, I just do. But on top of that, uh, Brett, you talked about wanting to try the mouth comp, um, and I think that's a really great idea. I am going to be seeing someone tonight that I'm really excited about. She is my old mentor. She's in town and I'm going to be cutting this, uh, this lesson off, not early, but like kind of right at six. Cause I got to run and go see her and say hi, but she's my mentor. She taught me how to rig about 10, almost 10 years ago. Um, she's a, an art director. She's done designs. She's done animation. She's done uh, cutout traditional, 
She's one of the most talented people that I know. Um, so I'm pretty excited to see her. But I'm going to be talking to her about this and getting some more feedback from you, for you. Uh, and so that's happening tonight. I wish that was before tonight, but that's tonight. Um, and so before we talk about that, I'll definitely give you some, some hints, some hints on mouth charts. So with the skull, um, as we kind of talked about, you can have a lot of fun with the teeth. The teeth are going to be part of your, part of your character. Uh, and when we are talking about mouth comps, kind of kind of matching the style of of the character or of the um, uh, the design you want to have an animated mouth comp that kind of matches this so Brett I know that you love uh, traditional cartoons and old golden age <laughs> I know you love the golden age cartoons and I think that you can apply a lot of the traditional animation principles to this design so I hope that you have fun with this maximize your stretch and squash capabilities here as I'm going to try to explain this to you as, as best I can and I hope that I'm clear but uh, because your character doesn't have lips <laughs> if you notice we usually have lips on top of our teeth uh, it's going to be the teeth that act as lips so you know you can have a lot of fun and have a lot of um, flair to your mouth comp and I think that you should push it and go for it with these guidelines in mind so um, I'm a big fan for have fun with this uh, anywhere that you can put put fun and flair into your animation um, as long as it works with the animation director's style but in this case you are the animation director so uh, without further ado let's talk about these mouth comps so this is your standard dialogue mouth chart. And this is a really great one because this comes right out of um, the animator's survival guide, I think. It's either that one or the other one with the book. With the, with the I don't even think I have these books anymore. Uh, I think I got rid of them. I'm regretting getting rid of these books now. Um, but when you move across the country a couple times, the books, first to go. <laughs> so especially the big ones, <laughs> which they were. Uh, but this is a very standard... Uh, picture and what I want to talk to you about is what's nice about it is it gives you the front view and the side view um, So here you've got all your fronts of the as ease the ease the uhs the oohs the the um, the and sometimes the the uh, And the f <laughs> You have all the mouths here uh, Your skull is somewhere in the middle. You got to have a font. You have to find a three-quarter uh, three-quarter view and don't worry I'm gonna go over a couple couple designs all I did was I clicked um, mouth charts I just googled uh, mouth charts animation and actually what I did want to look up was creative mouth charts animation and see if anything different popped up so we'll let that go we'll see what it what happens um, but these mouth shapes right here, you can see that the character is very happy as well. Uh, and so that's something that you kind of have to consider is, is your, what is the, like, what is the emotion of Skelly? So in that, it has to come through the mouth chart um, because your mouth charts are really what give your character its life or in this case, its death. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, but uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, what I wanted to point out was this is a really popular uh, mouth chart reference however it's kind of wrong uh, it's kind of showing you way too many mouth shapes this is not how you would animate um, when you are animating mouth charts like this like this it's really cool that you have this example so you got every single letter every single mouth chart when you go to animate this, it doesn't really work. It kind of just looks like a lot of mouth shapes and you can't really like do anything. So it doesn't, it kind of doesn't work. Um, when you get into actually animating a mouth comp, uh, we tend to cut out a lot of the pictures. We hold a lot of the patterns uh, and the shapes a little bit longer. So as cool as this is, it's kind of a nice reference material on paper, but when you start to actually animate, it doesn't really work anymore. So that's something that I, I just kind of wanted to point it out because it's, it's such a 
it's such a classic reference. It's definitely probably number one thing that people go to. It's just that this is a little unrealistic for animation standards. Um, so something something to keep in mind. You you don't want to have all those extra mouth movements like this. It doesn't really work in animation. It's very distracting to the eyes, and people do catch up on it, especially when you're working. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do that on purpose. Sorry, I'm having fun. <laughs> okay, uh, next picture. So this one uh, is this was a real this is a really good one because it really gives you a very basic understanding of what the mouth shapes should look like and I literally mean that like as in mouth shapes um, so you've got your eyes you got your oohs you got your e's with the tongue that's important uh, you got the s without the t without the tongue and <laughs> the hissing sound uh, the mm mouth where it's just like the line uh, the the ch ch with the with a little bit of space um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat all of these mouth charts, but this is basically your standard mouth chart. The only thing that I don't like about this mouth chart is when we create these things, we tend to put them in a specific order and the, the, spe the specific order doesn't really matter. Um, but, uh, what, what typically happens is everything's kind of in order of like organization, um, and and like what makes sense so like as a mouth moves and obviously you can say all these mouth shapes independently and like when you put them together they can be very random but when you're looking at them on a sheet it's really good to kind of have them as an organized a little bit more of an organized uh, mess so in this case this drawing is I wouldn't really say that this is organized I would just say that it's very accurate um, and when you want to go to organize it it would be like your open mouth A, uh, and then you might want to put your E, because you can see that you've got the teeth and the tongue, uh, and the mouth is just starting to close. And then from here, uh, you could do, you could get into this one, or this one, um, and then this one, oh, sorry, this one, then this one, and then this one, uh, and then this one, <laughs> and then you can get into your O's, and then you get your big O, the little O, um, and then you can do your L and your, that's kind of common. So uh, I'll answer that question in a second because that's a good question. Um, but yeah, these are these are very standard. Um, and actually, I don't think I, I can I, I can answer your question right now. I don't think that you have to add extras, but I will show you what that extra would be if you did. So. What I like about this drawing, and I will, I will send you the links, um, Brett, I will send you the links to this, to these drawings so that you have reference, because this one I really like, it's just not as, it's just not organized and it's very basic. So you can kind of use this and push your design for your, for your skull. Um, but this one here, I like this one because this one kind of puts it more in order. Um, it's just a very loose version of what that last one was. So it's, it's very similar, but it's a little bit more looser. So you've got your A's and your E's and your O's and your smaller O's and your T's and then the M. Mm. And then you can kind of see the progression of how the mouth is. So I would organize your drawings more like this to help you kind of see how everything is kind of coming together with your mouth chart. Um, and then this one. Now, I don't know. Let me see if I can... Uh, now, I don't understand, in this drawing, I don't understand why um, there's three different types of the mouth charts. Like, there's a frown and there's a smile, um, but I don't understand why. I don't know if it's the left side, the front, and the right side. It, this, it could be, but uh, I'm not sure. But for this picture, just focus. I just wanted to show off, like, this is a good example of the the same mouth shapes, but the different emotions. So typically what happens with, um, with, with what you just asked of the different expressions, uh, you have the different emotions. So you'll have a happy version of your mouth shape and you will have a sad version of your mouth shape. Uh, there's usually also a neutral mouth shape. So it, like, if, if I just said, if like this was like, let's do like, 
because uh, it's easy. Like happy, uh, sad, aww, uh, neutral, uh, something like that. So it might be really hard to see, but you know, your your face is literally going ah, oh, oh. So you want to do that with your with your skull. Um, the last thing, if you wanted to go out, but I would, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't go all in and do all of them, um, first, cause I'll, like, if you want, send me the design and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, because if you do all of your mouth shapes and all of your, I mean, I shouldn't say you shouldn't do it. You absolutely should, but be prepared to get notes and feedback and having to do it again. <laughs> cause that's what I'm going to try and get you. <laughs> So that's that's the thing. So yes, you can dive in if you want to just focus on the happy a happy mouth chart and get that done, or give an example of what a happy, a neutral, a sad, and an extreme mouth mouth shape would look like. And extremes are usually like in the range of what you're talking about, um, where you get back like you, you get farther into the golden age older cartoons where things are just pushed way over dramatic, uh, over dramatized. Um, or, um, or just like a wild, a wild facial expression that often goes with the extremes as well. Um, that totally up to you. Uh, you're your own commander <laughs> in that one. Uh, and then the last, the last picture that I have, uh, I really like this one. I don't know who pale mouth kid is. Um, but what's really nice about this one is it kind of shows you, it's kind of the angle of your skull and it shows you like the lips and this character has some pretty wild teeth. Now, typically in a mouth comp, your teeth, especially on your top jaw, they don't move. So that's something that you can consider. But again, we've already kind of talked about this. You want those teeth to move. Um, but if you want them to be a little more stiff than the bottom teeth, that's up to you. Um, that's something that you can kind of play with. Uh, but what's nice about this is it kind of gives you the lip, the lip shape. So if you kind of pay attention to this edge right here and see what it's doing. So you've got the closed mouth and also it's nice. You can see the progression. We don't have all of them, but, uh, you can see the, you can see the progression here. Um, you got the closed mouth and then the mouth gradually gets bigger. And then you get into these shapes here. It looks like these are this, like, a, I guess the mouths are all turned down no matter what. But um, you can see uh, that the lips are starting to to create that a more extreme shape than, say, like this one. Like this is very, they're just like flat circles, very basic, very, um, but they get, you get the point. Uh, but this one here, they start to push that shape. Uh, and you can, again, you can look up more mouth charts and see if you can, if you can find anything. Um, do, do, do. But do you have any questions about uh, anything, anything else? Like, like I really like, I really like this. Uh, I really like the oohs, the ooh mouths, because those are typically the ones where you can have a little bit more fun um, than, than the standard as and S's. Um, but yeah, I think that you can definitely take a stab at it and see if you can pull off uh, a cool mouth chart and yeah, just have, just have fun with it. Um, I would pay attention to the flow of your teeth because you still want your teeth to flow into all these shapes, <laughs> which might be difficult, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be cool to see what, what you come up with. Um, let me see what this, what, uh, the creative mouth chart pulled up. Yeah, I would not, I would not say that, uh, I would not say any of these are super creative, but you, you can see, you can see, let's see, um, Mm, yeah, I was hoping that there'd be some cool teeth ones. There's this one, but maybe not. Oh, Mabel. That sounded painful. Uh, here's something. Here is something. Uh, I'm looking at the teeth, but these teeth are changing, but they're just mouth shapes. So 
but this is something that you can kind of maybe use. It's kind of similar to this one. It just has a little bit more flair. Or maybe this one. This is a better example to what it is. Whoops. I can also see how the mouth chart would go for this character, which is why I think that it was so fun to rig in the first place. So I'm really glad to hear that that's something that you're interested in and trying to figure that out. Uh, for me, professionally, mouth charts were very difficult. Um, be, like to animate them and create them. Uh, it's something that I really had to learn uh, how to do and um, to design that I would struggle. So again, specialist, <laughs> not a generalist. <laughs> uh, and my friend, his name is Jen and she's a generalist. She's a generalist, a real true generalist. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna start rigging now today. So let's see how it goes. All right. So, um, Brett, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or anybody else that's watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We're going to be continuing building this skull. Um, doo -doo -doo. It's uh, so funny to always start this up to a week later and see where I'm at. Um, now, I took a photo of this for my Instagram. Um, last week and I know that this eye here is just a copy so I'm gonna delete it because I don't really want it there today um, but what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna give everything a peg um, but I'm probably gonna delete them but just so that they are there so we can move pieces around uh, it would be a good idea now if I compare my design to to my rig you can see that my eyebrow is currently not cutting my all my eyeballs so i need to set that cutter up um, that's something that i'm going to do first and then i'm going to probably take care of all of the lines that are being shown and i'm going to jump back to the eye so Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this because this week's uh, Animation Trends event for Toon Boom, um, what I'm building in the arm, you can kind of apply to anything. And so this is a really good example to kind of tackle a different example of that network style. Um, even though this is a skeleton and a face, we can still apply the seamless limb structure to this rig so that's what we're going to kind of focus on today i think that'll be enough time and so we'll we'll, we'll do the eyes we'll do the, we might have to do the eyes next week but let's start with the eyebrows uh because that's the i always like to go for what looks uh what looks the worst first um <laughs> or left to right <laughs> so uh lucky for us the eyebrow cutter that's missing it looks the worst and it's the farthest on the left so let's start there and then we'll work our way over uh making our way into the eyes so first thing that's first um and brett i know you were asking about this too when i'm working with my tools um the first thing that i have to remember to do with harmony all the time is because um we've got the washed out background to be set up for the for the backgrounds uh when i'm drawing uh we did that in our preferences but that means that i have to turn these two to use that to use that setup I have to turn these two buttons on so the light table and the current drawing on top Toon Boom used to remember that these were turned on um, but for whatever reason uh, the program no longer remembers so you have to turn them on every time you open up Harmony um, so that's that's number one uh, we always want to remember to turn those on and then do, 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 do. Uh, then we can actually see our drawing as it is. And so I'm going to turn my alpha up a little bit so I can see the lines a little better. Now, in my layers for each drawing node, uh, I've already separated them up. We, this is what we worked on the last two weeks. Um, but the overlay layer is just 
it's just the detail of the design so it's kind of hard to see it's kind of hard to see here but if you're looking through my drawing and you're looking through the design you can see that there is some stuff that's cut off um, you can't see the end here or here and you can kind of see the design peeking through the other side uh, my line art is where my entire outline lays um, and then my color art is on the color art layer. Uh, I'm not currently using my underlay, but we will be because we need to build a cutter. Um, and the cutter is what's gonna mask the eye. And the mask is what's gonna cut uh, this portion, the top portion of the eye, so that we can get that ultimate flexibility um, when your character is animated. So in this drawing here, we have to add our mask. And so to do that, I'm gonna steal my line arc, my line, oh, I didn't mean the whole thing. I wasn't actually stealing it. Uh, I'm just making a copy. So I'm gonna steal this. I'm gonna say copy. Uh, I'm gonna bring that to my underlay and I'm gonna paste it. Um, and the reason why I'm pasting this artwork is because I don't want to use the bottom part of it, but I do want the top of it because I, when I turn this on and I see all my layers uh, like right through, I see all my layers stacked on top of each other. This is the preview all art layers button. Um, I wanna make sure there's no gaps here. And there's a couple ways that I can do that. And the way I like to do it is I just take the artwork that I have and like this, I'm even gonna steal this line and bring it up on top. Uh, and now I'm gonna delete this stuff. And let me, okay. So all I have right now is the top of my line and I'm basically gonna connect I'm going to connect this extra piece that I've added right here. I just stole that from the bottom instead of creating a new one. I'm so lazy. Don't tell anybody. Um, all right, so I'm going to take this handle. I'm going to go to my tool properties, make sure that my snapping is on, which is this one, the little magnet. And here. All right, so now I've got this shape on top of my eyebrow. And I'm just gonna fill the whole thing and I'm gonna color it with, not this one, but I'm gonna duplicate it, call it my cutter, cutter color, and I'll get rid of the alpha. Do, 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 do. I love ha using this color because it's so bright and it's very obvious um, and it reminds me of a green screen which means mask um, do, 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 do. so now when I look at my eyebrow mask from the top down from the camera from the camera tool from the transform tool uh, I can clearly see that the eyebrow is going to mask the eye which is good um, if it was peeking out over here i might extend this mask a little bit we will also be adding deformers on here so um, there will be other ways to do this but we don't necessarily want to see it right and so this is why this is where we're going to start to get into layer filters so we're going to start to get into engineering today um, and this is why we work the way that we work we've got our artwork on all four layers, whoops, just hit the wrong button. <laughs> Get back here. Uh, we've got our overlay, which is our details, our line art, which is our entire line, our color art, uh, which is the fill, and then we've got the underlay, which is the cutter. We don't always have, we don't always have a cutter attached, but when we do, we use the layer that's not being used by anything else, which is a good place to put it make that a little bit bigger uh, and so because we are using all of these layers we now get to bring in our layer filters so this is where engineering starts and we're gonna to start to build some engines so if you remember 
uh, these are our art filters. So in your node view, you can hit enter and you can just grab, um, they're literally called the layers that are over here. So <laughs> we got the overlay, the line art, the color art and the underlay and we can bring them in. So uh, we've got our overlay. We've got our line art. We've got our color art. Um, we've got our underlay. There we go. So now we've got our four little layers that kind of correspond to our layers that are over here. Um, and we want to keep them in order. And if you remember in Cadence, uh, we had a little conversation about grouping them and keeping them clean, uh, which you absolutely can do. Um, if you save them into your library, so anybody that's watching this right now, kudos, because now you can go into your library and you can get that group. Um, if you've got a Cadence rig open, you can literally copy and paste the group, but we're going to create one right here, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and so with keeping with the old style and the old tradition, what we what we used to do was we would actually go in and label these layers so that you can see them from far away. Um, because we're using the groups, it's not necessary because you can't really see them inside the groups. The groups kind of make it known. But um, if you're not using the groups, it's really, really good to go ahead and uh, give these a little bit of a makeover so that they're very easily spot spotted in the in the network. Um, and you can see that I've already got my custom colors logged down here. And I'm going to even rename these so that they're a little bit smaller. So we've got our OL. We've got our line art. And we'll change that color. Um, and I love using the color green because the green is so obvious in the network. And you can get a very wide variance of green colors. Um, and you can clearly see which layer is kind of doing what. So it's really underlay. Uh, we tried this with several colors. Blue worked well too. Um, Pinks and reds didn't really work. I don't know if, I don't remember, I don't think we tried purple, but green's just kind of stuck. So, so now when you are farther away in your network, you can actually kind of really see the difference between those colors. And so that's why, that's why we do that. Um, they also take up a lot less space. So it keeps your network a little bit cleaner. And now, um, we need one more node, which we're going to add because we're going to group this and then we're going to recreate the group a couple times and I don't want to miss it so that we have to add it to if every group. That's not the point. Um, so I'm going to add one more node and we'll talk about that one today, but I won't talk about it right now. So we got the auto patch, auto patch, um, and I'm going to put that right in the middle. So now that I have all of these five nodes, I'm going to go ahead and group them. Um, and the shortcut is Control Shift G or Control G. That does that gives us something without a composite. Um, control Z, or you can just right click and hit Group, and you can go Group Selection. We're not grouping with a composite, so we'll just group with that. And now when we go inside here, oh, it gave us a composite anyway, but we're gonna delete that. <laughs> All right, so now we've got uh, our overlay, our line art, and our color art, um, and our underlay. And this is a really important lesson. Groups are your friend. I love groups. Um, and uh, it's, compositing doesn't like groups because you have to jump through a whole bunch of groups and it gets confusing. But it's when you stick to, when you're rigging and you stick to the rules of groups, you're good. You can use them. So uh, in this case, we've got our multi-port with the five outputs, which is what we want. Um, we want to have five ports coming out and we want one coming in. So what it's gonna look like on the outside and we can rename this group, but we're gonna hook this up so that now instead of our eyebrows, which is not being filtered, it's just plugged into the nearest compo composite. Uh, we're gonna use this this little technical node here that we just created um, and it's going to create 
a very specific way for us to rig. Um, okay, I'm going fast. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Okay, I can slow down a little bit. I'm trying. Um, I do have to go in and rename this group. Uh, but this group right here is what's going to give us the flexibility that we need for cutout animation, cutout rigging. So I'm going to go ahead and rename it by clicking the yellow box. And I'm just going to hit, um, so we got Ole, or I'll just put O, uh, line art. Um, the auto patch is in the middle. That's the one that we have to remember. And our color art and our underlay. So our Olapku, that sounds weird. Uh, and just to make it pretty, I will add dashes. There we go. So we know which output is which position. Um, when I jump back into the group, and you can see that I'm inside of a group here. So from your top, your little top button right here, uh, we're inside of the Skelly group, and then we're also inside of the OLAPCU group. Um, so this gives us a little directory so we know where we are. And this multi-port in and this multi-port out are going to act kind of like the bread sandwiches. So the bread of a sandwich. So they hold everything in. You, in a group, you need those multi-ports. You need something going into the group, and you need to have something going out of the group. Um, so these are very, very handy. Uh, and since we are going to repeat this, we know that we can trust that the first port on the left is going to be the overlay. So we always want to keep everything in line um, so that we avoid confusion for the, for the animator. Even if you're not using, let's say we're not using the underlay, we don't always use the underlay. Like in this case, we've got a cutter in our eyebrow, so we need that underlay. But if we weren't using it, uh, you still kind of want to add that output. You still want it to be there. Um, what's nice about that is it's really a clear indicator for whoever is using the rig. Like whatever, whatever is coming out of these ports serves a purpose. So for rigging, you want to have a consistency. And in this case, this is a fantastic way to be consistent. So we're going to stick with it. Um, and so from here, now we have this, uh, this right here. We've got our group, we've got our brow. Right now it's connected to our facial composite, but it's not being specific. So what that means is we've got our drawing and it's just plugged right in. Uh, it's very direct, but for cutout animation, we're gonna start to get specific. And since we've already uh, put up our, we've already set up all of our drawings to have our layers, we can go ahead and attach this group to all of our layers. Now it's going to look different once we hook it up. And I think that you hold alt, it's either alt or shift. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Uh, do, 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 do. Hold alt or shift and you pop it in. Now, in this case, this is where it starts to get confusing. Um, when, you, when you've popped it into an already pre-existing connection, it's going to only run out through one output. So right now, you can see that my eyebrows cutter is being seen on camera, and it's also the only one that has a stream running through it into the composite down here. So it's technically the opposite of what we want to see. Um, so what I can do is unplug that. And now I know that my overlay is my detail layer. So I can plug that in and you can see that that starts to show up. And then if I want to plug in my line art layer, I can plug that in next. So now I can see that the line is there. I want to bring in my, not my auto patch. I just want to bring in the color art. So I'm going to skip the middle one. There's a reason why the middle one is the auto patch. We'll, we'll get into that um, when we get to our first network. But now you can see that I've got the overlay, the line art, and the color art plugged into the networks. And you can see that this is the original design. Now my 
my underlay, I can plug that in, but again, that's going to give me this big green mask. And the thing about the mask is I don't actually want to see it. I just want it to do something. I want it to cut that eye, but I don't want to actually see it. So I don't want to plug that in. But what I have right now is the first two and the last two multi ports. They are plugged into the network and they're not, there's no, you can see that there's no streams being crossed. They're just they're just plugged right in directly so that you've got the four the four streams. Um, and so what this is doing is it's mimicking what the eyebrow would do if it was plugged in just by itself. So they're technically the same. Right now they're technically the same. Um, it's not doing anything different it's just plugged in four way two ways two different ways but four times <laughs> that's weird math uh but you can see the four plugs here so and they're again right on top of each other so i'm going to unplug my underlay because i don't want it i don't want to see it um i want it to cut the eyeball so we're going to bring in uh, a cutter which is the most used effects node of toon boom and this is what's going to create our mask. So I'm going to quickly type in cutter, C-U-T-T. -T. And that brings us this little node here, and it's got the little ninja eyes. Um, you can see that there are two multi ports on the top and one at the bottom. Now, one is running directly into the mask, and one is running through the cutter. So this is how I identify what has to be cut versus what is doing the cutting. So Brett, I'm going to throw you a question. What are we cutting? What are we cutting? Da, elevator music. music da, 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 Brett, you with me? <laughs> am I gonna have to am I gonna have to keep singing? Uh, you're cutting the top portion of the eye so it's not visible. Correct. Um, if there was a big slime bucket and I could pull that, it would dump slime all over somebody. Because uh, it's correct. Uh, you are correct. So. We are going to be cutting the eye, which means that we attach the cutter to the eye. All right. So uh, one more question I'm going to throw to you, Brett. Um, where is the mask drawn? Where is that mask drawn? Where did I draw that big green mask? This question's a little bit harder. Do you remember? The cutter mask is on top of the upper eye. Yes, that's where it's located in the camera view, but what about in the network? What layer did I draw it on? Yes, bingo. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, it was the underlay layer, which is this little nub here. And if you remember, we didn't want to hook that up uh, down here because then we would see it. Um, our cutter is a tool, which means that it doesn't get plugged into our like our general composites because that's what is shown through the, the, the display um, of the camera. So we can hook up our cutter. We're going to hook the eye into the cutter. And it's going to run through these two center points right here. And then we're going to add our mask right here. So I'm going to do the same thing earlier. Hit control, pop that onto the eye. And then I'm going to hook up the underlay to the little mask here. 
And there we go. Now we've got our eyebrow. Um, I just somehow took that peg off, which I didn't mean to do. But now we've got flexibility in our eyebrow. We don't have any cutters or any deformers hooked up here yet, so we've only got this up and down movement. Uh, very basic, but there we've got the beginning of our, our eyebrow, and our face is starting to look a lot better. So as I mentioned before, um, we are going to keep going. We're going to now make the face look beautiful. We're gonna turn that skull into some nice porcelain skin, all right? So well, crack-free porcelain skin. Uh, so that's our next step. So let's go explore some of the other drawings. Uh, we're going to need this group. This is very important, so I'm gonna copy this. Uh, dee, dee, dee. We've got our nose hole. We've got our nose tip. Uh, we've got the nose bridge, and we've got this jawbone, um, and we've got this. Uh, that's a blank drawing. I don't know what that is right now. Let's put that there. <laughs> uh, we've got this one too. Where is their skull? <laughs> what is this one? This one's our jaw. This is our bottom jaw. This is our top jaw. All right, why is the bottom? I think the bottom jaw is just saving place. Let's get rid of these two. I do not know what those are. I'm saving them for something. Let's let's unplug them, put them up top. All right, so what did I have there? I have to do that one more time because I got so distracted. Okay, we got the top jaw, we got the nose, we got this bottom nose, and we got this. Mm, now this is gonna be hard to see, so I kinda wanna jump over. I'm gonna jump over to the skull. So we're gonna start over here. Yeah. Because we're gonna start applying the same principle. I think that we're not using any of those. Yeah, we are. Okay, so let's give these pegs. And I've already copied my group. And so um, when you copy and paste the drawings in the network, you get into problems of cloning. But when you're copying anything below the drawings, you can uh, you can do that. You can you can copy and paste very freely. So I'm gonna copy and paste the group, and I need a couple because there's a there's a whole bunch of pieces here. And if I want to do a side by side, so I can look at my design at the same time, um, what I would do is I would just create a, another peg on top of the peg that holds my design in place, and I will rename it um, slide. I like to use the word slide. That way I know that I am sliding my design over. So I'm just gonna grab this peg. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna grab this peg and I'm gonna bring my mouse back over to the camera, camera view and we're gonna slide this over uh, like so. And now I can see both my design and my my rig at the same time, uh, which is pretty helpful. And if I want to put that, that design back in place, I would just deactivate that peg um, and it puts it right in back in place for me. So I don't have to worry about anything. I can do that with Z depth as well. Um, so if I wanted to activate this and bring that forward, I could, or I could make another peg completely. Call this one Z. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just isolating the positions and, and the, the, the information so that I don't, um, so I'm not creating mm, more things on one peg, I guess so you can say. So if I deactivate that and put it back, let's say I wanted to bring the design forward. Um, I don't have my coordinates toolbar open, but if I open it, I'll be able to see this a little bit better. Doot, doot, doot. So I don't know why that's turned off. Uh, but now I can grab my Z, and if I want to affect the Z space, I can watch this box right here and just hit Alt Forward. And so now my design is in front of my rig, so it lets me see my design a little bit better than the um, than the rig. Uh, it's not something that I want right now, though. So I'm going to deactivate the Z, and I'm just going to keep the slide open. So there we go. And I'm gonna jump back in here and now I can look at 
my design very objectively and I can find the pieces that need to be cut. Um, and so this cheekbone and this cheekbone have to be cut uh, as well as this top jaw. And so we're going to basically, again, what I'm doing on Thursday with the arm, I'm going to be kind of replicating that here. It's just a little bit not of a linear sense. It's a little bit more um, organic, <laughs> but it still works. All the pieces come together uh, to create one big piece. So let's see, we've got our ocular near, we've got our ocular far, we've got our forehead and our skull. So I'm going to need to add this piece to the skull for sure, because the skull is what's going to be driving a lot of our, our cutting. Um, so that's going to need one. I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to need to cut the designs from the ocular bones and then this top jaw. They're also going to need one. So I'm going to need another group, another group. And then if I go to my top jaw, I will need that there, but I'll do that one last. We'll get this one out of the way and then we'll get into then we'll get into the nose so i'm going a little bit backwards but only because the nose is so small and i want to have more um, examples over how this works and actually because the nose is so small i will hide them deactivate them all right so the ocular uh, near. Let's, let's hook this up. Do, 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 do. Actually, before I hook it up, let's take a look at what's inside. It's always good. So our underlay, nothing's there. Our color art is our color art. Our line art is our line art. I'm hoping that these points don't come back and haunt us. Uh, and then we also have this one. And it looks like I forgot to set um, taper the lines. So Maybe I will do that right now. Make it a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to hook this up. It's going to automatically go to the underlay, which we don't necessarily need. Um, but what I do need is all of the three other ones. I'm going to remove the underlay gonna hook up the overlay the line art the color art now again I'm trying to be very careful so that I'm not crossing any of these streams uh, you can add a composite so if I undo pretty much all of that sometimes what's nice to do is just create a composite and the shortcut for that is control H and hook that up and then you can go and just hook all the three up like so and then you can I wonder if I can just I don't think I could pull that out directly I think that it make it oh it does work yeah okay it worked uh, so that works well um, you can just pull the composite out and then we can do it again so pop the composite into the next piece and then you can pop and you can play around with it a little bit it does give you some wiggle room so that you can actually connect to the ones that you want but then sometimes that happens where when you go to kind of move it too much it just completely disconnects so I don't mind just plugging it in so that it works and then <laughs> adding the pieces that I want and let's pop that out that is working well Right. Now I don't want that underlay. So again, this process is pretty repetitive and that's kind of what I want to point out. It's kind of what my, my shtick is that the ricking process is a lot more repetitive than people give it credit for. So if we're looking for those patterns, it makes it a little bit easier to learn. So now I've got all the pieces that I want that look ugly right now, but they're not going to look uh, super ugly the whole time. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is the cutter. 
right? So we need to we need to cut our we need to cut the pieces that we are not looking at um, or we don't want to see. And what I mean by that is that line art layer right here, this line art layer right here, is something that we want to be there, but we don't want to see it when it's overlapped with the other pieces. So this is where this is where it starts to look a little bit more like the arm rig when we get into this. This is called a cross network, except that we're cross networking something that isn't an arm. Um, so it might not look like a cross, but it might look like a lot of crosses. <laughs> but what it does in the end is it gives you a beautiful seamless looking shape uh, where all of your edges are outlined and then you've only got the details showing on the inside and that's what gives you that flexibility that we want to look for. So I'm going to bring in a cutter, which is already there, the top of my list, which is so nice. Um, all right, and so uh, pop quiz, uh, Brett, what are we cutting right now? What should I cut first? Which piece? And which piece is the mask? That's an even harder question. So feel free to answer that one in two, two phases. What are we cutting first? And what, what are we using as the mask? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, which part did you lose track? Where are you? Because all I've done right now is attached a group to all of the pieces that need to be cut. And what needs to be cut is anything that has a shape that is, has a full outline. Okay. All right, all right, uh, all right. Let's keep going then. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I'll start with these two ocular pieces because they're right here. Uh, I'll hide this so that we can see it happening. Um, we are going to be cutting this outline because we can't see it in the design. You can see that I've there's too much artwork in the rig uh, compared to the design. And it looks like actually I might have um, one of these oculars, uh, this ocular might should might be should be behind the skull, um, which might be a better place for it. But right now it's fine for where it is. Uh, so the skull is actually going to be the piece that is cutting here and here. It's basically anything that overlaps. So wherever you see an overlapping piece is what you want to cut. So to describe that and we're going to be cutting the in this case we're going to be cutting the line art layer so i'm just going to pop a cutter on the line art layer and we'll do the ocular near and this we're going to cut by the skull so all we want to do right now i'm going to connect it to the to the color art and there you can see that it is a much prettier shape um, and much closer to the design. So we're only seeing, right now, we're only seeing what is shown in our overlay because our overlay is plugged in and it's not being cut. If I was to unplug my overlay, you would see that it is, um, it disappears. We get this solid shape. If I move this around, you can see that it is uh, very flexible. We've got the strong outline all the way around. The only thing that I'm worried about is that sharp edge. I don't like sharp edges anywhere, but whoop, activate, reset. Um, the other part of, to this is if we dive in a little bit closer, um, you can see this rough edge. And this rough edge is because I'm using the cutter. And if you remember, inside of each one of these groups, um, I've included a node that's called an auto patch and the auto patch is is my basically a tool for cutting this exact shape 
So what the auto patch is, and I don't think I don't think that I can show it right now on this in this example. Um, but if I use the auto patch instead of cutting it by the color art, I can cut it by the auto patch, like so, and it gives me that much cleaner, that nice cleaner edge. And I'll show you what that why we do that. But I'm gonna plug in my overlay first and make the whole thing look a lot nicer with our our overlays there all right so we'll do the same thing with this one before i get too far into that auto patch um, so i need a cutter i need to hook it up to the line art which is the second nub of the group um, and it should always be and then we're going to hook that up, the mask up to that auto patch from the skull. And that gives me that nice shape. Again, I might have to put that cheekbone behind, but we'll worry about that after. Now I can jump over to the top jaw. And we can basically do the same thing here because you can see there's no line right here. We want that solid shape. And so I can hook the group up. Uh, it is connected to my underlay, which I don't want. So why don't I create a composite and do that trick again? So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And I only want my line art, my overlay, and my color art, not my underlay. Not using that today. And then I can I'll just delete that. And I need a cutter as well, so a cutter. And when I hook the cutter up to the line art, this is also going to be cut by, not that, uh, the skull. Because the skull is what's overlapping all of these pieces. So you can see here, what is this? We've got something. Uh, I see. So here we've got a line. Now this is, we've got to take a look at exactly what's happening here. Um, I want to add that to the cheekbone. I want the cheekbone to be cutting that as well because this line is a little too long. You can see, you can see there's a little bit of overlap there in the design, but I, I think that I'm going to be adding that through the teeth. I don't think that that's going to be the jawbone. So I'm going to take this jawbone and I'm going to be... I'll use this composite here, and I'm going to be cutting that jawbone by the skull, but also this cheekbone. So I need the auto patch here. And now I've got my the shape that I want. Now again, this character is still missing its teeth. We have to figure that out. Um, but it's starting to have a more solid shape. It still needs its second eye. Um, but we're getting there. All right, so after this, uh, what I also want to do is I want to explain the auto patch. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to bring it out here. I'm going to unplug Skelly for a second. And I'm just going to use a regular drawing. So Control R, add and close. And I'm just going to quickly draw in the line art. I'm just going to draw something here. And we'll call, we'll do this color. Maybe not that color, we'll do this color. All right. So this is going to make more sense if you can't see through the line. <laughs> Uh, all right, so here we've got our our image, um, and it's basically just a shape. I've used the line tool. It's been filled um, with just on the line art layer. Um, I haven't moved my information over yet, but here we go. Here, now I have. Now this blue line that is, if you can kind of see that, it's kind of hard to see. But there's a blue line um, that I, I can basically turn on and off. It's called a stroke. And what that does is it basically tells you where the line is being generated from 
in the program. So with, with Harmony, if you're using a brush, the line is literally going to be on the outside of that brush line. But when you're using a line, the, the line is running through the center uh, and the image is basically being generated from the center point outwards. Whereas a brush and you have that outline, it's kind of like all contained inside of that outline. Um, they're very, very different forms of creating the lines. And with rigging, we use the line tool because the brush tool creates anti-aliasing. Um, and that's a whole nother lesson. But for auto patches, it's really important to know that when you're working with the line and the line tool, if I turn my strokes on, and that's just by pressing K uh, on your keyboard, you can see that a blue line appears and that's the invisible line that your line is being generated from. Um, and it's very important to know that because the auto patch is going to be reading that line. Um, and that's basically how we avoid anti-aliasing in the software. So we basically have to set up a whole bunch of systems. Again, anti-aliasing is our arch nemesis, so we always kind of want to be on the, outlook, uh, on, the, on the lookout for it. Um, but with an auto patch, what it does is while we have separated our artwork, so we've got our line art here, and we've got our color art here. If you take a closer look, or if I really quickly just delete a chunk of this line just to show you how it works, you can see here that the color art runs to the center of this line uh, because that's where it's generating from. Um, and that's what creates the nice overlap so that we don't have any anti-aliasing. Uh, to show what an auto patch does, the auto patch, and we used to create these um, using cutters manually, but with the auto patch, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, but it, the auto patch, what it does is it reads your line art and your color art. And it's, it's basically a simple mathematic form, mathematic formula, <laughs> a simple mathematic formula inside of a program. Um, but what it's doing is it's taking the information that's on your line art layer and it's applying it to your color art layer and it's creating a secondary shape. So it's kind of doing it automatically. We don't have to worry about it anymore. But what we used to do uh, to create one is we would bring in a cutter. We literally we would literally create a node that was called a cutter and we would basically say we're going to cut the color art by the line art and instead of using the auto patch node actually i didn't it would be like that uh we would actually have we would still have this fifth port but it would be the line art cutting the color art node and that would give us the shape that we need but now we just use an auto patch so let's show you what that looks like All right, so we're not going to use this cutter, but I'm going to keep it uh, connected. And what am I not plugged in here? I need my color art plugged in. So now you can see here that I've just I've selected the whole thing. If I select just the one, I want you to be able to see the, the corners. Um, but if I select the one art layer, it will actually select just that art layer. So there's my color art, there's my line art. And then if I can grab my auto patch, oh, you know what, I need to plug my auto patch in. Let me plug that in. And now the auto patch, oh, usually it shows me the actual trim. Oh, you know what it is? Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me put it on top of the line. No, you know what it is? Because I cut that line. Let me undo to the point where I have not cut that line. There we go. All right, so inside here, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. Let me plug that back in. All right, so that's normal. And I'm going to plug in my auto patch. And the auto patch usually when I highlight it, it shows me usually you can see the difference. Let me let me get rid of the line. Let me try if that works. There it is. Okay, the line was just in the way. All right, so our auto patch, I've got this selected right now. Our auto patch is actually trimming 
the shape on the inside of our color art just enough so that it matches with the line thickness so uh, to see the difference you now you can see like this is the edge that you can see and I'd have to plug my line art back in but you can't really there's really no way to see all three of them at once unfortunately to see it unless I pop the color art on top let's see yeah, there we go. So now we can see all, all three at once. We've got our auto patch, which is the smallest size. We've got our color art, which is a little bit bigger. That goes to the actual halfway point of our line. Um, and then we got our line art, which is currently underneath all three of this stack. And uh, so that's, that's how you can see just half of it right now, because the other half is being covered by the auto patch so it's a little tricky but um at the same time very very powerful tool <laughs> so the auto patch is not artwork the auto patch is never ever ever plugged into the network the way that i've just done this right here um, the auto patch is literally a tool it's an, a utility um, and it's only meant for cutting so on that note, when we come back here, you can see this is why I'm pulling the auto patch. Do, 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 do. I'm pulling from the center and not the color art. And if you remember, it was the color art layer that gave us that awkward, that little notch. And that was because the cutter was eating a little too far into the artwork. Whereas the auto patch is perfect. It creates that perfect seam without the little gap. Um, that creates that awkward corner. So that's why we use the auto patch. And so that's the hardest part of this lesson is figuring out what the auto patch does and how to use it. So now that I've added the group to the top jaw, um, I've got my bottom jaw here. I can, you can see that there's a, a line right here that we don't want, we kind of do, but it's the teeth. So we don't want that in our jaw, or maybe we do. It's kind of hard to tell if our, our bottom jaw is completely free floating. It looks like I need, that's a, the bottom jaw has to pop forward. Um, but maybe we'll leave that for now and we'll, we'll work on the hat because the hat is also a really good example of uh, using the same network. So if I find the hat pieces, um, doo -doo -doo, which I think is this one. So now, same idea, uh, this right here is going to be cut, and this right here is going to be cut. Uh, we don't have to worry about the hat itself right now, do, do, do. but let's, we need this group for each piece. So we've got the hat hole, control V, we've got the hat tear, control V, we've got the hat. So we're just going to plug this in and make sure that we are using the proper points. now. Again, I know that my overlay has the design, my line art has the full outline, and then my color art has the actual fill. And then same with the hat tear, my overlay has the design, my line art has the whole outline, and then the color art has the color art. And I'm gonna pull in the cutter one more time because I'm gonna cut the excess artwork. So C U T. So you can see that there is no excess artwork here and here, but over in my design I have included it. So I'm going to cut, I know that's my line art, so I'm going to attach the cutter to the line art of each piece. And I'm going to cut that by the piece that it's overlapping with. So it's overlapping with the hat. And I didn't add the group to the hat, so we're gonna do that. So now the hat has its own group. I'm gonna plug that in the way that it needs to be. So we've got our overlay, our line art, and our color art. And if you remember, the piece that I'm going to be cutting it by is the auto patch because that's the utility the auto patch cuts so it's a 
There's no pun, but it works. So now I can cut these two pieces by the pieces it's overlapping with. So now I've got the ability to move this tear around, which lets me kind of fake and have a little fun with um, some Z depth if I want to put that behind the character's hat for whatever reason. Uh, I can reset. Um, I've been moving these pieces around and again, I don't typically add pegs at this stage, but I'll be deleting them and re-adding them so that all the artwork is, I know that all the artwork is in, in the right spot. Um, but this little piece here will be really nice to have that uh, fluctuation so that you know what's in front and what's behind. Uh, moving things in Z space is Alt and the up and down buttons. Uh, you got to be careful you're not hitting the control buttons because then it acts a little bit like that, which is not quite not quite what you're looking for but now we're getting closer so now we're gonna work on the nose and then we can get into the eyeball because uh, these these again these networks are all the same um, we're starting to also have a lot of connections and this part's confusing this is what I actually don't like um, and something that I probably should have done for each drawing I probably should have had a uh, a composite so to go back and add one of those right now would be not hard, but it would basically replace all of these. So each group would have its own composite and that's my bad. We're adding a little bit of work to ourselves right now, but let's, again, these composites just align with the groups um, the order we haven't done anything crazy the order should still be the same uh, your overlay your line art your color art everything should be very aligned you shouldn't have any crossing crossing over but this makes it a little bit easier to read the network and it makes it a little bit easier uh, why does each have a because it makes it easier to read the network so you don't have as many streams I try to avoid this see, see how there's so many streams coming into this composite um, I try to limit a composite to have at the most 10 to 12 so in this case we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 it's just too hard to know what everything's doing so it's a it's a good it is a good habit um, and I just for, I wasn't thinking I didn't do it and I'm regretting it so I'm going to do it right now. And just going to pop that in so it's on the first one. So it means that this one and this one. It doesn't have to be on every piece. Um, the forehead creases does not have a group, so I won't add one there. But I will add it to... This is the line art, which means that the connection for the overlay has to be in front and the connection for the color art has to be behind and I can do that for this piece as well so the overlay would be in front of the line art the color art would be behind the line art <laughs> starting to talk and it's not making sense. <laughs> All right, so I got that one. We'll do this one, same idea. Too many composites in one. Uh, this I'm connecting below. This is the line art. So it means I want the overlay to be above and I want the color art to be below. And again, I'm really just recreating this a hundred times. So overlay, line art, color art, underlay. We're not using the underlay, but that's what we're trying to do. And I think that I've got the top jaw. I got this one. I know we'll add this to the, to the brow. There we go. And it just, it just cleans up our network a little bit. So now if I zoom out, you can see there's just fewer connections. There's more connections up here, but you can see that they're just running straight down. Um, 
instead of all funneling into the one to the one system. Because when you have like a hundred streams funneling into one composite, it gets very overwhelming very fast, and it's very difficult to start noticing like what's over here and what's over here. Um, so we want to keep it all as as compact, as clean as possible, uh, and that helps. Um, in the arms, it's really nice to have that too. In the the arm that we're building on on Thursday, it's kind of the same principle. We have, uh, I think we have a composite for the upper arm and the lower arm. I don't think we have one for the hand in that case. Uh, it just helps. All right. So uh, we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. Now we're gonna work on the nose. So the nose I'll be able to add, I'll add that composite right now. And you can see what that looks like. So I'll just add the nose, the composites before. I'll put them here and here. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the nose. You can see Compared to your design, we have extra lines here that we don't we don't need. And so I want to cut the extra line from this nose bridge and this nose tip. Uh, and we're going to cut that by whatever piece is overlapping it. So in this case, we got to cut it by the jaw. Um, we might want to cut it by this back ocular. And we also want to cut it by, not that one, the skull. Because uh, that's where we are going to have all the pieces overlapping so that's what we want to cut it so i need the group copy and i'm going to paste it here and i'll just hook that up and it makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing too so we want the line art or the overlay the line art the color art uh not necessarily the underlay but the overlay the line art, the color art. We're skipping that auto patch every time. The auto patch is not artwork. We do not want to use it as artwork. I can clean this up a little bit. So it makes it look a little nicer. Bring this down a little further so we can see where our streams are heading. And now I need a cutter, but because I know I'm cutting nose bridge by all of its surrounding pieces, I'm gonna use this composite. So copy, control V, and I'll do it for the second one. And I can hook this cutter up to the line art. And then I know I'm gonna cut it by a couple things, so I can do that for both. And now I can start collecting auto patches, but I can also grab these composites and then bring them over here. And I want to hook up this ocular, the auto patch, to both of these. And as I start plugging these into the composites, I might start seeing it. The ocular is on the, on the far side, so it's not going to show it that much, but I've got the chop jaw over there. What's left? The skull. So now I can add my auto patch, the auto patch of the skull, and now it's working a lot better. I still have to add the jaw. That's what's gonna give me uh, and the, the jaw bone is going here. Uh, I try not to cross streams even when I'm even in my masks, so it doesn't really matter what, what order they're in. Uh, I just always try not to cross stream, so I try not to do something like this. Because it creates unnecessary crosses. Uh, and I guess that's just a habit after 10 years. Um, but there you go. That's So now we've got almost everything looking pretty good. We can take a stab at our eye, uh, and it looks like next week we're going to be focusing on the teeth. So that'll be a good time for you to to have like a like a rough sketch, um, just a rough sketch for the mouth charts. Um, yeah, that's looking good. Uh, any questions? I know that you kind of got lost, but you're going to come back, and it's going to you're going to get this. It's, it's uh, you're going to get it. 
Uh, but do you have any questions right now, Brett? Anything before I keep moving on? Because that's that network is a harder network to figure out, but it's so versatile. It gives you so much flexibility from what you're doing. Um, and again, if you want to see why we are taking... I'm going to change the color of the overlay, but this will show you. So right now, if I pull this piece completely apart, you can see that the overlay line that we added, that's our detail line, you can see it very clearly when it's painted a different color. Um, it looks too, it looks complex, but I think when you get in there, you're going to find that it's not as complex. Uh, again, you have to remember that the artwork is positioned in a specific way. We did that last week and the week before. We put our details on the overlay layer and now you can kind of see what it looks like when you have all the pieces stacked on top. So here you can see the overlay very clearly, which is usually the same color as the line art, so it, you can't see it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to notice it. But here you can see that overlay and that is literally the, the the basically the actual thing that you draw in your design is the overlay, the rigging piece that we need to keep the structure of that flexibility for all the momentum and like the pieces kind of coming together and it keeps the it keeps the shape unbroken. Uh, that's the thing that you want to have on the line art layer. That's your unbroken line. Um, so everything's kind of nested in into this piece and into these layers. But it all translates very easily over into these groups, um, which is the overlay, line art, auto patch. The auto patch is the only thing that's new. Um, and let me put this back. So here you can kind of see. So like if I was to go through all of the drawings and change all your overlay lines to be green, There's no overlay, I want this nose. Your character is gonna look very different. So here, you can see all the overlay, I've recolored them, um, so you can see what's there. But this, now when you move stuff around, you basically are guaranteed to have unbroken artwork. It looks like I have to cut the cut the eyebrow. It looks like I didn't cut that one because we are seeing it there, but we shouldn't be. Um, and that would be the skull. The skull would do that. Do, 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 do. But that that's the magic of your overlay. That's the that's basically your design. So you, you can basically see and compare everything that you've got here. These are your design lines, like the actual, the actual lines of your design. Um, that's what's in green. So that's what's giving you the definition and the flexibility. Uh, sorry, I'm going over this a couple times because I really, I do really want, want you to understand this part. Um, <laughs> but it looks like, let's see, let's see what, how you do when you come back and you watch the videos and you keep going. I think you're going to, I think you're going to get this. Uh, all right. So let me undo, turn all these back, and let's all right. Um, all right, so let's fix this eyebrow because I can see here that I need to break this connection that it shouldn't be there. So we gotta chop that. So quick quick test Brett um, what are we cutting what pieces are overlapping the brow that we would use to cut the brow like what pieces are overlapping with that What pieces are overlapping the brow? Yeah, that's the question. 
what rigging pieces are what 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 pieces of the character are touching the eyebrow let's rephrase it Yes. The eye. What else? The bigger piece. Don't worry. This is something, this is where people start to get stumped in rigging. This is common. This is why I'm asking right here. <laughs> Cranium. So it's the cranium that I was looking for because uh, the eyes are going to be a little bit different. The cranium is the bigger piece. Yeah. So this is what we want to cut. Uh, we could also probably use the this bigger ocular. We might have to, but we'll see. Uh, but the cranium is the one. The cranium is like the main piece that's cutting everything. It's kind of why I wanted to shift over to work on this side of the network. Um, I'm gonna hit O to find that really quickly. And we're gonna grab the auto patch here, although I don't know if um, the brow is set up to be cut yet, but let's find out. Yeah, it's not. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Uh, we need a cutter. So we need that cutter. So enter CUT. And I'm gonna hook that up to the line art just like the other things. And I'm gonna take that cranium piece and cut that line art so now we've got the perfect, the perfect outline. Uh, and when we move the eye this way, it will, that's the magic of our line right there. It's not disconnected. And then same with this one. We've got this beautiful line. It gives us maximum flexibility with these eyebrows, which I, I'm sure people are gonna uh, appreciate having the maximum flexibility like over here uh, and that I think is it for until we get into the jaw so we can take a look at this eye now this piece needs a couple more drawings so we're not gonna be able to get through it all today we'll have to come back to the eye but let's start it out make it a little bit bigger um, I need to add this this design right here what have I called it I've called it the cheek um, or the winkle. This right here, this um, this skeleton line is technically the cheek. We also have a line over here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which one to call the winkle. We have the pupil, that's pretty obvious. The eye, also pretty obvious. But oh, here's another example of the cheek. So I wanna keep that. And I think having the cheek and the winkle this is probably a good good example so let's let's do the inside one the cheek and the lower one the the winkle and let's go ahead and put our design back in place so that we can start to copy it again um, and I might want to use my Z depth let's see mm. Do I want to use the Z depth? Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, I guess I could. Okay, so let's go back to this eye. I've already got these two drawn. Uh, the winkle I can see, the cheek I cannot. So the cheek, I'm gonna basically reference this one. I've got, I know that there's a line here, but I'm going to end up turning that drawing off. And I wanna remember too to add handles. I always forget to add handles. Uh, all right, so this piece right here, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a square. I'm gonna draw a square. And I'm gonna have to change, whoop. Let me try that again. It was a bad square, it was more like a line. And I'm kind of making this one up. I'm gonna have it come from the center 
So something like that. Um, I want it to be uh, maybe a little bit longer than the eye, uh, but I want it to be flexible. And what I'm going to do here is I'm right now I'm drawing all of this on the overlay, which I don't want. All right, so my my full line is on the line art, and this one is going to be a little bit different than before uh, we're going to add a cutter here it's kind of going to act like the eyebrow so i'm just going to fill this with the cutter color and i'm going to put the cutter color on the color layer so that's no surprise there that's we've been doing that the whole time um, and this is where we're going to start to get a little bit fancy so uh, we can put this on the line art layer or the overlay but we are adding too much information and for the eye it's not the same network as the um it's not the same network as the uh you know what maybe i'll ignore this cheeks for a second um we don't really have enough time for this i'm going to deactivate this we're going to come back to the cheeks <laughs> We're going to come back to the cheeks next week. Uh, what I will work on right now is I will just continue what we were doing, but I'm going to bring in one of these groups and we're just going to, we're just going to keep it a little bit simpler for the eye. We're going to just work on the eye and the pupil. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking about starting the cheeks. Uh, so, okay. So if the eyes and the nose changes as it moves, do you alter the shape of the eye and nose or bring in the other eye and nose drawings uh well we're going to be adding deformers so the deform you'll be animating the deformers and you don't have to change the change the, the drawings uh, unless you are you only change the drawings when you're drawing like it requires a drawing swap and the drawing swap is m something that a deformer can't do essentially so we're going to be adding deformers on there if that answers your question Uh, but yeah, let's forget I started on that other piece. We will come back to that. Um, but we've got our pupil. Let's double check our layers. So again, they look good. Our line art is on the line art layer. Um, we don't have anything on our overlay. Uh, and our color art is on our color art layer. That looks good. And then the pupil or the eye eyeball itself, uh, same thing. That's great. So let's let's focus on that what we want i'm gonna give the pupil a peg just so that i can move it around what we want right now is to create a mask and the pupil should not be cutting out of the eyeball like this we want that pupil to be cut by the eye and so the eye is a different network from the 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 arm and what we did in the skull um but basically there's only three networks that you have to learn in harmony uh, the one that we just did which would be the cross network that gives you that seamless flexibility um, and then we also have to learn how to do um, like a pupil like the mask right here so we've got a window into the eye uh, which allows us to cut the pupil so it's stuck in that in that eye shape um, and then the other one would be an inverted cutter so that's something where the if we were to invert the cutter on the pupil, you'd only see the outside of it. Um, it's, it acts more like a like a blockage than than a window. Um, so the mouse charts and different eye drawings, etc., are used more for guiding on how to shape the deformers. No, the mouse. Well, the mouse. We are going to be so. We should talk about this. You're either going to be doing mouse mouth swaps oh my gosh mouth swaps for the drawings but if you want your teeth to like this the teeth have to be rigged so that's why I'm saving them to the end like like I mentioned like these things have to be um they're kind of thought about we want to make sure that we're thinking about this but your teeth you're going to be drawing the designs and then we're going to be rigging the mouth to match those designs and so it's going to be very similar to what we did in with cadence where you have a rigged mouth instead of mouth swap drawings uh we will not be doing too many this you will not need to do too many drawing swaps with this rig um you'll you'll have flex a lot of flexibility with the pieces that i'm that i'm giving you so we are, if I'm answering that well, uh, 
But if you wanted to like change the shape of this pupil, um, we kind of talked about that last week. I forget what the, I forget. I think it was like, do we keep it a fluffy cloud? I think we did it, right? So we've got this, it looks like a skull in itself. Let me hide this design because it's hard to see. This is why I don't like to work with my Z depth up. Um, but here you can see that I've created a second drawing for the eye pupil because now it kind of mimics the skull. Um, that's something that a deformer would have a hard time doing. So we just create it. Sometimes characters have like those like cutesy hearts or stars um, or sparkles in their eyes. If you think about like My Little Ponies <laughs> uh, and then like like the close ups of the little uh, watery eyes and they're all like. Um, so we would add we would add drawing swaps to, to hit those poses. Sometimes we don't add them in the basic rig. We just add them when it's needed. So if a basic rig in the first episode doesn't need those eyes, we don't add it to the to the to the basic rig. We in, in episode seven, when those eyes are necessary, then we'll we'll have a special pose with that character. We'll add those eyes in. And then it goes in its merry way. So it's something that we can add much later. Or if an animator wants to add them, if we miss it, the animator can add it. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be added in the rig right away. Uh, but I'm going to give you as much flexibility as I can. So, uh, but to get back to here, um, let's reset this. Well, let's keep that pupil there. Uh, we already talked about masks a little bit and cutters, so we kind of know where this stuff's going to go. So I can bring in a cutter. I do need to have the group. Um, I've already checked my artwork, so I know the artwork is on all the layers that I want it to be. I can add those composites. So I'm going to add the composites to just the eye for now, because it's the only thing that is going to need this group. Do, 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 but I don't want the underlay, I want the overlay, I want the line art, and I want the color art. So now I've got, and this is why we still only have one eyeball of our, of our character. Um, it's because we haven't networked it yet, so once we've networked and got this one eye working well, we're just going to duplicate it, and it's going to save us half the work. So you asked, uh, I forget what the question was exactly at the beginning, but that's why we use static transformations, it cuts our workload in half, like literally. So we want to take that shortcut 100% of the time, 99% uh, of the time. There is reasons to not use them, but few and far between, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got this, we've got the pupil. So we want to cut the pupil by the eye. So this is the cutter, I'm gonna hook it up again. Um, so I'm going to hook up what's being cut. The pupil is being cut. So I'm going to put it there. And what is cutting the pupil? Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we cut it by the auto patch, because that's what we've been talking about. And now I'm left with this little sandwich looking pupil, which is not quite right. Um, and so what we have to do is we just have to invert our cutter. So this is what a, a regular cutter looks like. It's cutting, the mask is cutting the object, but in an inverted cutter, the mask is showing the object. So we can just double click this mask right here. A lot of times when you set up a cutter like that and you can't see your artwork, it's best to just double check um, to see if that's happening. Cause sometimes again, if I didn't have this peg on there moved so they were overlapped, I wouldn't even see like the pupil just disappears, so I wouldn't see it. So it's always good to kind of double check your cutter. If it didn't do what you wanted it to do, just double check uh, right there and then see if that works. So now we've got our inverted cutter. However, what's different about this one, what's different about this network is if you remember, I was talking about anti-aliasing and because I've used the auto patch, we've got anti-aliasing and if you can see this white line right here we want to avoid that in this network so when you're when i mentioned that you want to learn three networks the auto patches are used for the seamless um, and then the regular cutter color art not the cutter the color art is actually used for eyeballs and this is how we prevent a lot of anti-aliasing so here you can see that something else has happened. Oh, it's because it's 
it's in front. So I'm just going to quickly turn this off so you can see that. So this is working. It's cutting it, but it's just in the wrong, it's in the wrong position. So my pupil right now is in front of the eye, but I actually want it to be behind the eye line and in between the color art. So now I've got a perfect sandwich for those pieces. Okay, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done. And there you go. And that's the that's how you create an eye. So we will stop there uh, for today. As I mentioned, I have a heart out at six. But do you have any questions before? I know that you I know that you kind of lost track, but I have a feeling you're going to be able to go back and get this one. Um, and again, look for the rep 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 <coughs> label. Um, look for the look for the repetition because um, there's a lot of repetition in today's lesson. And so maybe watch the video, like maybe watch 10 minutes of it to see, like to kind of go forward a little bit and look for the repetition and then go back and try to do it step by step. Because I think that by trying to follow step by step, you're missing the bigger picture. Whereas if you kind of watch it in 10 minute chunks and then go back and try to do that 10 minute and then watch the next 10 minutes, try it that way um, and see, see if that helps your learning process. <laughs> Hey, hi, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, you want to go out, I know, I know, but last, last chance for questions, do you have any questions before we sign off, and I'll use this opportunity now to say Thursday, big day, animation trends event uh, with the Toon Boom team, um, I will be talking to Lisa Feigl, who is the Enterprise of Sales uh, for Toon Boom, she's incredible, I... Uh, we're, we're good friends, so <laughs> so I think I can say that on, my, on air. Uh, so it's really cool that she gets to talk to me through that process. So yeah, I'm pumped. I hope everybody signs up and goes to it. Yeah, I'll go through it and let you know. Thank you again. No worries, Brett. This is my pleasure. Um, I hope that you have a good night, and I hope that uh, you take a look and see how far you go. And again, um, I'll send you the links to the... I'll send you the links to the mouth comps. I'm excited to see how you uh, approach that because uh, I, love, I love that process. Um, and we will talk about it a little bit more next week, and I'll see if I can get you some professional feedback on that one. Jen's watching. Uh, yeah, have a great night, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>